Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we'll take a look at the ATEM Constellation Switcher from Blackmagic Design. We'll look at how it works with Skyway products. We have Master Key 1 and Master Key 36. And if we take a closer look at what the ATEM Constellation is, it's a two rack unit switcher. It has 40 inputs in 4K or 10 inputs in 8K. And it has 24 auxiliary outputs, which you can assign anything to. So if you want an ME output, you assign it to one of the auxiliary outputs. So super, super flexible product from Blackmagic Design. Has four ME rows and everything else. So we need something to control this product. And Skahoy has Master Key 1 and Master Key 36. So these two panels are um, in the studio today. And we'll take a look at what they can do. So if we look at the Master Key 1, it's divided into a section with the T-bar. LED bar for the transition position. It has buttons for auto cut and uh, fade to black. It has buttons to select your ME row. And uh, well, basically, these buttons are not assigned to that in a hard coded way. You can as always configure your Skyhoy products using our um, web utility. And I'll also get back to that later in this video. If we look at the um, the, the uh, let me see left side of the switch here. We have the uh, input select row, so two rows of buttons for program preview. Or as you'll see in this video, we can assign it to uh, delegate sources to the auxiliary buses. The 24 of them we have. Then, if we go even further, you'll see that the Master Key 36 is a nice extension of the Master Key 1, so that you can essentially take these two panels together and address. Um, or you can take two Master Key uh, 36 and address up to all the 40 sources in, in direct um, button presses. Normally, and also in this demo, we'll be using shift keys to get access to all the sources that are um, um, available on the ATEM switcher. And of course, if you want to have multi-ME um, control of your switcher immediately and not by delegation through buttons, you could have multiple Master Key 1 and 36 panels arranged in a larger setup because these panels are configurable, so you can build a large panel out of smaller panels from Skyway. So let's take a look at what this does for us. And um, as I said, we have these two products here, so let's start with the Master Key 1 and look what it does. We have the um, selection of ME row. You can see we are currently on ME4. I go back to ME1. You see um, the uh, preview bus, the program bus. I hold down the shift key, and as I do, you see labels are changing. So now we are accessing up to camera 20. Only camera 20? I think later in this video, we'll take a look at how we could uh, change the configuration to go even further. But let's just, uh, we stay here for now, OK? If I go to ME2, you can see this is now ME2. It's also revealed in the labels. And if I make selections to ME2, we can look in the software panel and we can see that sources are changes on, uh, changing on preview and now on program as well. If I go to ME3, we can change to ME3 in the software and you can see that I can do a transition position, I can do an auto, I can do a cut. I even have access to the keyers up here. So let's turn on one of the keyers, another one and another one. Uh, I didn't even mention how many keys this product has. I think it's like 16, four for each channel. So it's it's really, really powerful. Okay, so that was selection of the ME row and how it reflects on uh, the, the bus delegation rows right there. If we look at this row of buttons, it's normally configured, and it is today as well, as a kind of menu selector. So when I press here, you see that I am now selecting the source on auxiliary one. I have auxiliary two if I press on this button right here. But notice that I still have access to my ME row, but this time we have um, used the function called program preview, which means that you will see what is on program, but you basically select the preview and then you do the cut to, uh, to uh, make the uh, transition. Um, okay, if we look up here, you also see that as I'm changing the ME row, I have ME 2, 3, and 4 uh, upstream key and fill sources. If I hold down the shift key, I have access to the key. Now it's fill. We have uh, audio parameter adjustments. So if I press the sides of this four-way button, you see how I, I turn volumes up and down. Uh, let's just go quickly check here. So uh, we should see if I'm... You see how the fader for camera number one is, is moving up and down as I'm using this button to adjust the audio volume. Pretty neat, isn't it? 
Um, maybe we even coded this to turn on and off the audio source. No, we didn't, but um, it's usually something that we put in here. For instance, that one. Yes, so there you can see I can turn on and off, off the audio source by using the uh, audio state from this menu. Um, so um, auxiliary one, two, and three, media access. And again, this is now mapped down onto these buttons here. And the labels are really nice because this is what you find on so many Skyhoy products that we use the OLED legends to let the products become truly flexible because with an OLED label, we can uh, freely assign any function to the key and you'll always know what it does because it says in the display. If I go here, you can see it's now um, delegation of sources. If you don't want to use the encoder knobs up here, I have macro execution right there, audio as I just showed you, and um, state eight is state eight. Honestly, I'm not really sure. I think it was DVE, but um, maybe it's just left blank for you to fill in. Again, there has to be a little bit room for customization for the user. So master key one, ladies and gentlemen, if we turn our eyes over to the master key 36 we have decided to make this a, a powerful auxiliary delegation panel okay so currently we are on auxiliary one and two and it also says in the title bar right there so so on the lower row of buttons you have auxiliary one on this row of button you have auxiliary two and if you look inside the atom software control in the switcher section here you can see let's go to output number two and you see it's currently 10 so as i'm changing these buttons you can see um, I am selecting the, the source for output number two. So I, I should not say auxiliary anymore because it's really output number two. Output number one, by the way, is my uh, is currently set to my ah sorry about that is set to my um, mix effect row I think yeah me one program output. So um, if I uh, hold down the shift key, I have two shift keys on this one. So you see, if I hold down uh, this shift key, I have access to sources 13 up to 24 and if I hold down the second shift key I have access to 25 up to 36 and like that we could also have access to the final two sources but really it's not only 40 sources keep in mind and, and that's clear if you look at this list we have more than just cameras we also have media players we have um, of course color bars and the color generator inside so all these should also be considered sources beyond the 40 physical inputs on the system. I would like to go to the configuration to show you how we could um, give it a try to see if we can reconfigure the shift key to um, allow us access to more sources on the uh, um, master key one instead of the uh, 11 to 20 we have right here. And that will be a lesson for you into how configuration of these units are done. So um, let me just grab my Skyhoy firmware application right here. You see it's uh, connected, the, the panel is connected with a USB cord, so I can press local configuration, that will bring up the local web interface on the master key one, and we now see a web browser pop up, and in this web browser we have the master key one loaded, let's see, should be right here. Let's take a look at this button, program one, um, this key and how that's configured and we'll look at it only in the mix effect state we have over here so I'll just well okay let me just explain what auxiliary one two three and so on is actually you'll see that those states that's the columns you see on the screen corresponds to each of the states that these buttons are mapping so when I'm changing with this button I'm really changing something called states in the control and this and that moves the control over to the next column of actions that is assigned so if you take a brief glance at this you see that actions for uh, auxiliary one selection is here auxiliary two auxiliary three and so forth media player Kia and audio but to make it easier for us to understand what's going on on the screen I'll just disable all these states so we now see only the mix effect state and in this state we notice how the the action program source is selected selecting source number one into the atom switcher or if I hold down the shift key it is program source for um, no sorry program source 11 uh, input source 11 selected on program uh, I wonder if it's the same on the other button so let's just hold down shift and enable a few more of these and if you look at it yes source 2 and source 12, source 3 and source 13 and so forth. If I go to um, 
uh, the preview buttons, you'll see exactly the same pattern. It's just a different action, the preview source action used instead in that case. Okay, so I will now um, go to program here. No, wait, let's just do preview because that's what we mostly do. And the trick is that you add a new shift level to the controller. So it's really as simple as what I'm doing right now. I'm adding a new action. I am selecting the, the shift uh, function before it, and then I select now source 21 right there. I do the same down here, select shift, preview source 22, and um, let me see, preview source 23. Okay, so all I need to do right now after saving is to figure out how do I get the controller into something called shift state 2. Because when I hold down the shift key and release it again, it is going into shift level 1 and then back into the normal state. So maybe make this a cycle button so that it will cycle us uh, up to shift level 1 and then to shift level 2 and then fall back to shift level uh, 0. Um, alternatively, we change the fade to black button to do shift, but in this case, or maybe we can find another key that we rather want to do. Maybe use this one. Okay, I think we'll do that because it's a little better and it's probably more probable that you want to have a hold down shift key than you want to have a cycling shift key. So honestly, I think we should use that button to do it. And we then select the system action called shift level. We select level number, oh, not number three, but number two. But there you see we have levels all the way up to 10. So it really means that Whatever we are doing right now, we could even do that on level 3, 4, 5, and so forth to create multiple shift levels as well. I hope you understand that. And I choose hold down as my function. Just to have a brief sanity check, let's see what the uh, original shift key does. Does that make sense? We, we see here it's shift level 1, hold down. Yes, it seems to make sense. And it seems that we have also added a special color to this one. Uh, which is the amber color. We could do the same for our shift key, but let's now just save it and see if this works. And now you can look at the master key one. We see the shift key number two is right here. It has the label, it says shift two. When I hold it down, look at what these labels do. We have camera number 21, 22, and 23. On the front of the switcher, you can see as I press these buttons, I am now accessing sources 21, 22, 23, 4K sources on this amazing product available from your Skahoy panel. So now you know where you go when you need flexible control of your ATEM constellation. Mm -hmm.